Okay, everyone. So let me give you a quick update on Web3.js that Web3.js version 1.0 does not exist. Yes, you heard it right now. I had IP to Web3.js 1.0 because now it does not exist. So the latest version that we have currently is Web3.js 4.x. So you can clearly see that we have a jump from one to fourth version of Web3.js. And do watch this video because if you will not watch this video, trust me, you are going to get a lot of errors. And I want to make sure that you do not get those errors, especially while you are watching Core Eater tutorials. Okay, so do watch this video so that you do not face any kind of errors. Okay, so let us see what are the changes that we have in Web3.js library. So as you can see, currently I'm using with currently I have searched for Web3.js version changes. And there you will see the GitHub link for Web3.js. And here, if you will see, Currently, the latest version that we have is Web3 version 4.0.03, right? And if I will go down, let me show you the documentation part because as documentation is not searchable on Google for now. Now, if I will click on this Web3.js documentation. So now you can see that we are on Web3.js documentation. And if I will go to the providers part, and if I not actually the providers part, but to the upgrade from 1.x part, so you will see that we have a lot of changes, but let me tell you the changes that we have is like the, there are a lot of there is there is not so much changes when it comes to the syntax part, but it is mostly like the data that we are getting from the zero chairs. And I will explain you this like for now, let me tell you the most important thing like till now we were using this particular syntax in order to import Web3, but now we are going to use this particular syntax in order to import Web3. Now you might see like you might like say yeah okay but what is the difference between these two both look same but there is a difference if you will see now we are using these curly braces right so we are using these curly braces and then we are importing this like web3 but in this case as you can see we do not have any kind of curly braces so remember this otherwise you will have this error that web3 constructor is not found or something like that okay and if you will see another important major thing that i want to tell you is this particular thing as you can clearly see that earlier like there were these packages like web3.bzz, web3.sshh and if you will see in my web3.js in my web tutorial also I didn't explain all these things uh, to you right and the reason was very simple because I thought these were not useful uh, during that time and I, I found out uh, right now only that they have actually removed it from web3.js library so you will not find any of these things if you were using this so let me tell you you will not be able to because now they do not exist and if you will go down so you can see that like they have given certain examples as well so that you can check but i think this is good another important package that we should be worried about i think is the web3.eth and this web3.eth as you can see it is like the package which is most used by developers so that they can you know get the desired things like for example if you want to get the balance or something like that but in this case, now you will see the syntax part, as you can see from the documentation, the syntax has not changed. Watch what actually they have changed is that earlier, like the things that we were getting in the format of a string. Let's say if you are calling this particular thing that get balance, you are getting this, the result in a form of a string. But now you will be getting the result in a form of big int. In the same way, like earlier, you were getting the result of get block number is a form of a number. But now you will be getting it as a big int. You will see this n sign after the number. So do not get confused. It is not some typo or something like that. It is actually a representation of big int. So remember this thing. Otherwise, you will fail. Like you will get some errors, or you will not actually get some errors, but you will not. We will get confused when you will actually get the data from the blockchain. Okay. So remember this thing. And everything is good. Just see, like uh, everything uh, they have done the same for every particular, you know, uh, method the big end format and ether.js also actually use this big end format only so i think they are adopting the same so this is thing okay now another important package that we should consider is web3.eth.contract again you will see that they haven't changed the syntax part syntax is the same as you can see my contract.methods dot my method again everything is same as you can see the only thing that they have changed again the value that we are getting from these methods like earlier we were getting the result as true or false but now we will be getting result as a big int form so you need to convert it into your desired format if you want to use it okay and I think they are using this big int format because doing operation on big int is much easier. And that's why I think ether.js is also doing the same, but who knows. And uh, 
definitely you can see that each and everything else is the same the only thing is as i said is in the output format right so this is good now another important package that you should be considering is web3.utils again uh, you can see earlier we were doing the import in the form of this but now this is like in this form like if you do not know about utils this is a library which was actually used in order to have unit conversions type of kind of a thing like if you want to convert ether into way you can do that and earlier as you can see this thing was acceptable in web3.js like you can omit this particular second argument and it will accept that but now it is mandatory that you need to have the first argument as well as the second argument Okay. in my tutorial that i have taught you i have taught you this way only so you don't have to worry but yeah remember this thing that you have to provide both the arguments if you are still like if till now you are just passing one argument only so now provide both the arguments okay otherwise everything is good then definitely look have a look at the documentation like if you are using other methods as well and i think this is it this is it if you are you you know you are just starting with your web3 journey you must know about all these things i think and definitely this is good okay otherwise definitely look have a uh, definitely have a look at the documentation so that you can learn more about it and uh, if you are getting some error let's say while using the js you can definitely refer the documentation so that you can why the error you are actually getting okay